when we replace a high lactose microplacer with a high fat microplacer, we're not expecting a huge changes or huge changes in performance or average daily gain or body weight that we need. That's, that's not usually the case. However, we are starting to see a very consistent uh, results in terms of calf health, especially in terms of fecal consistency, fecal scours, uh, and some other health status. So in the past, it was all about performance, uh, and that was most uh, probably the main reason people would say, like, we would use a high lactose. It is cheaper. It is much easier to do it. Um, and now we are starting to see some farmers switch into a high-fat milk replacement. So hello everyone, this is Luis Ferreiro, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt podcast. And today we will be discussing about milk replacer or more important, uh, fat concentration for milk replacers. And to discuss that with us, we have Dr. Marcos Marcondes, uh, which is a researcher with the Miner Institute. And Marcos is obviously very well known for his work uh, related to calf and heifer nutrition, as well as dairy cattle nutrition. Uh, but I'll let Marcos talk more about himself. So, Marcos, thank you very much for joining us today. But before we move into this very important topic, give us a brief background about yourself. Thank you, Luis. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, talking about ourselves is always hard, but I'll start talking that I'm also from Brazil as Luis. I'm from Brazil. I'm from the capital of Brazil. Brasilia is a big city. Uh, I invite you all to visit Brasilia someday. Uh, when I was a young kid, I used to go to my grandfather's uh, farm. It was like close to Brasilia. Um, it was a beef cattle farm. Uh, so I always, always grew up in love with animals. And then I uh, went to Vissosa, which is a, has a very big um, university, one of the major agricultural universities in Brazil. And I did all my studies there. I did undergraduate, my master's and PhD in ruminant nutrition over there with a short period of sandwich program at Texas A&M University. Um, I worked for six months as a consultant, and then I joined the, faculty, the University of Vissosa as a faculty where I did um, uh, education extension and research for about 10 years uh, in dairy cattle nutrition. Then in 2021, January 2021, I moved to the Washington State University, where I worked for an um, amazing four years. And last October, I moved to the Mine Institute as a dairy researcher. The next giant leap in dairy profitability is here. Introducing AffiCollar feed efficiency service from AffiMilk, the first sensor to accurately measure individual cow dry matter intake. Combined individual feed consumption with milk production data to get profitability insights never before available. Hear from producers who are using it to make a big impact on profitability and sustainability at AffiMilk.com. That's A-F-I-M-I-L-K.com. Yeah, no, very nice. And uh, obviously, as you can see, Marcos has a lot of experience uh, with research. Uh, so, Marcos, we want to take advantage of your knowledge uh, about milk replacer for dairy calves. And one thing that is always intriguing is that if you pay attention to the nutrient composition, the fat concentration is always lower than what we see for raw milk, right? Why is that? Yeah, so it is indeed very interesting. Well, uh, the butter fat is one of the most valuable um, content in the milk. So um, as for milk replacers, we try to use as much as dairy products as possible. Uh, so we use a lot of lactose, we do a lot of milk protein. However, as butter fat is very, uh, has a, a, a very high market value, uh, they try to use as little as possible. So they kind of compensate the amount of energy in the milk compared to the milk replacer with lactose instead of uh, fat. Uh, also in the past, probably in the early 50s, 60s, there was a lot of links between like uh, milk replacers with higher fat, especially because of high content in vegetable fats and um, um, high incidence of scours in calves. So because of that, for many, many years, uh, the great majority of the milk replacers were formulated using a low fat and a high lactose content. 
And you mentioned a little bit about adding lactose, right? So thinking from that perspective, is adding lactose as efficient as adding fat to the milk replacer? Uh, uh, why or why not? Yeah, that's a, an excellent question, Luis. Um, first, energy, or energetically speaking, usually they have more or less the same energy. Most of the studies, or not most of the studies, I will say several studies comparing raw milk with milk replacements will find the same performance. Um, some studies will find better performance with whole milk, and I don't remember seeing any studies showing a better performance with milk replacements compared to raw milk, if that raw milk was pasteurized, of course. Um, however, there are some minor details regarding the, lac the high um, lactose uh, milk replacer. So, uh, first of all, uh, it is known that um, the lactose it will increase or elevate the osmolarity of the GI tract, meaning that uh, whatever is in the GI tract will attract more water and lead to a more, uh, let's say, a fluid feces or a more, um, a little more scours, not exactly a diarrhea but a, a more watery uh, feces that some farmers may look at as a, a problematic. Um, so there are some linkage between a high lactose and more a, a faster passage rate in cats. Uh, and this might be problematic. And also uh, more recently, based on our studies and some studies for, from other uh, research groups have shown um, ha a very good improvement, in, especially in health, when feeding a high-fat uh, milk replacer or raw milk compared to a high-lactose milk replacer with cats. So one thing that I want to, um, from the very beginning, um, be clear is that um, usually when we replace a high-lactose milk replacer with a high-fat milk replacer, we're not expecting a huge changes or huge changes in performance or average daily gain or body weight that we need. That's, that's not usually the case. However, we are starting to see a very consistent uh, results in terms of calf health, uh, especially in terms of fecal consistency, fecal scours, uh, and some other health status. So in the past, it was all about performance, uh, and that was most uh, probably the main reason people would say, like, we would use a high lactose. It is cheaper. It is much easier to do it. Um, and now we are starting to see some farmers switch into a high-fat milk replacer as well. Very interesting. So, so would be correct to uh, to describe that the main benefit of high-fat milk replacer would be the health status of those calves. Well, there are several ones. So, first, health is really good. Second, is thermal regulation, right? So, we need to remember that during the winter time, energy uh, does increase or energy requirement. Uh, will increase. Um, the high-fat milk replacer will have a little higher energy compared to a uh, high lactose. Again, we don't expect a lot of performance, uh, but you need to remember that most of the farmers will not adjust milk intake according to the weather. So that extra bump, 5-10% increase uh, in energy uh, I was just checking um, last week the data from our own study with comparing low versus high fat. It was at an average 13% difference in energy intake. Um, so that energy intake could be a good bump during the winter time as well, especially if the calves are housed outside. Um, yeah, and remember there are some other like uh, benefits, right? So fat has uh, fat has antioxidant pro properties. Um, it is linked to a better vitamin A, D, and K absorption as well. So besides the immunity system, there are some other benefits that when you put it all together, um, there's health benefits and sometimes, not always, you find some uh, performance benefits with the high fat intake. Absolutely. And I think the winter discussion is very important, right? Because at the end of the day, a lot of those calves, they are housed outside, even though they have some of those very nice hutches that are supposed to be warmer than just outside, but definitely very key and certainly something to, uh, to consider related to that. So when I talk about high fat milk replacer, how high are we talking about? Yeah, so that's a good question. So first, let us go on the low level. So milk replacers usually have 18 to 20. Sometimes you'll find 15. 
sometimes 22, but the, the overall agreement for the, the regular, I'm not say the low level, I would say the regular microprocessors between 18 and 20, that's the great majority of the microprocessors out there. You, you will start to see every day more like, uh, or at least higher levels, 22, 24. Uh, but when I say high fat levels, I'm saying at least 28. Uh, but because if you just get like a very simple calculation, um, if you get a milk with maybe 4, 4.2% 4 fat, what well, that's kind of the normal nowadays. Uh, and if you divide that by, let's say, 12.5% uh, dry matter, we're talking about 32 to 33% fat um, in a dry matter basis in a whole milk. And if some farmers are, I've said, I, I was talking to a farmer last Friday and he was mentioning that he with Hosting is getting like 4.5% butter fat. And that's even higher. So that we're talking about 35, 36% fat in the whole milk as a dry butter basis. So uh, when we say high, we say at least 28, uh, maybe targeting 30 at this point. I'm not 100% sure like what levels are there, but I've seen 28 and 30%. I have not seen something higher than that. Uh, in research, I've seen some studies with 33, 32, but I don't think commercially we are up to this level. I think we can find some, some milk replaces with 28 and 30. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for the clarification, because when you start talking about high, I start thinking, OK, so we always see some of those comparisons. But what type of comparisons those would actually uh, be the focus? Um, no, I think that's great. Absolutely. It looks like very interesting to see those responses with the, the high fat milk replacers. Um, Marcus, I think this was a lot of great information, but. Tell us uh, some other thoughts you have when considering milk replacer. What other things farmers have to consider to make sure they get a very good quality product to make sure that they can properly feed those calves? Yeah, um, of course, uh, source is very, very important. One thing that I, I haven't mentioned is that it's not based only on a high fat. The fatty acid content is extremely relevant. So if you're high fat, um, and even though we're not talking about a high fat milk replacer with that fat coming from dairy cream, because we need to sell that dairy cream, right? But uh, we could use, for instance, animal fats as lard, or we could use vegetable fats. Uh, the most common ones, palm fat, uh, rapeseed uh, fat. Um, we are not using a lot of soy or corn oil because those um, those are linked to those bad results we saw in the past, high in PUFA, and the milk replacer needs to be high in um, saturated fatty acids, okay? So uh, you are looking for a high fat, especially high in animal fats, high in saturated uh or monosaturated, but mostly saturated fatty acids. Palm fat does a good job, but it's not the same. The research is very clear. Animal fat is on one cluster. Vegetable fats is on a different cluster, but the higher the saturated fatty acids on those vegetable fats, the better the response on the animal. So what should we looking for in a milk replacer with high fat? We should look for a high fat milk replacer with a high animal fat, including and if that's not possible, try to use a higher level of saturated fatty acids, a little bit of monosaturated fatty acids, and as little as possible of uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Um, and maybe my last thought is like um, how um, how is fat uh, affecting immunity? Because that is like the the the, the trend we have been seeing. Well, there's very there's several. Um, theories about it, but the most one, the, the stronger ones is like, first, there's better lipid storage and energy efficiency. Um, there is study shows a better efficient um, efficiency in energy utilization. Well, fat is more efficient, uh, is usually more efficient than carbohydrates anyways. Um, also, there is uh, some studies showing that the liver metabolism change a little bit when you feed a high fat nuclear replacer. Uh, especially regarding the ability of oxidizing fat in the liver, uh, uh, getting the animal less likely to have any uh, lipid stress, or um, they call it, I think, lip lipidity, 
uh, in the liver. Um, so better ability to export those fatty acids from the liver to the to the rest of the body as a VLDL. Um, better energy utilization. Um, yeah, I think those are all and less stress overall. So when you look at the animal with a high fat, they have uh, less expression of genes related to stress. How is that happening? We still don't know. But there is, um, there is a better response to stress when you feed them with a um, high-fat milk replacer. So there's some initial hints on how, how the metabolism is working here. We still continue that working on. Um, but those, are, I guess, are the main reasons why we're seeing a better uh, response in terms of health of those animals where we're feeding a high-fat and high-animal fat milk replacer or a high saturated fatty acid milk replacer to cats. It doesn't have to be this hard to keep cows pregnant. At Virtus Nutrition, we understand the negative impact that lost pregnancies have on a dairy's economics. Every failed pregnancy means more money spent on expensive semen, additional replacements to raise, and fewer valuable beef calves to sell. Feed what embryos need. Strata with EPA DHA, the pregnancy nutrient. No, absolutely. A lot of great information there. And obviously, we are really looking forward to uh, your next steps uh, for this research, because obviously, it would be very nice to continue to elucidate all these responses and metabolism and how you can more and more improve uh, calf nutrition. Thanks again, Marcos, for joining us today. I think uh, people at home will have uh, a lot of information associated with milk replacer to consider now when feeding calves. Uh, for you at home, thanks for joining our podcast, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you, Luis. It was a pleasure. Hey, everyone. We are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition-related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, Feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.